Hi, Steve here from Steve's Internet Guide, and in this video we're going to talk about IP4 subnetting. In early IP4 networks, address classes were used to identify the number of bytes allocated to the network component and the number of bytes allocated to the node component. And if you remember to, back to the previous video, and I'll put a link to that video below, uh, we had three address classes, and they were class A, class B, class C. And the class A used one byte for the network and three bytes for the node, and a class B used two bytes for the network and two bytes for the node, and a class C used three bytes for the network and one byte for the node. And to determine what class you were dealing with, you'd look at the IP address and you'd examine the leftmost uh, byte, which is this one here. And if it had a range of 0 to 127, it was a class A. 128 to 191 a class B and 192 to 223 it was a class C. So if it was a class C address then you knew it had three bytes for the network and one byte for the node. So why do we need to subnet? Why do we need uh, IP subnetting? Well there's a problem with large networks and all modern networks use Ethernet as a data link protocol and Ethernet uses what's called the shared media technology and it's negatively affected when a large number of nodes are connected to the same media. If you go and have a look at the networking basics on broadcast and collisions, it explains it in more detail. What that means is, though, is even though a Class A address can accommodate thousands of nodes because it has 24 uh, bits for the allocated to the node, it's totally impractical to put that many nodes on a single network. As an analogy, it's like having a school with hundreds or thousands of students but only one classroom. It would be impossible to actually get anything done there. So what? is a subnet. Well, a subnet or subnetting divides a large network into smaller networks, just like a partition divides a room into smaller rooms. And we do this to create separate areas that don't interfere with each other. Uh, putting nodes on a subnet isolates the nodes from lots of broadcast traffic because routers don't pass Ethernet broadcasts. And I say that's covered in uh, the Networking Basics course and there's a link below and you'll find links on the site. Now, important is routers. Uh, to create a subnet, you need a router. A mask covers something, something we want to hide. We can use it to hide our identity, for example. And here, we're going to use a simple paper mask. And this mask basically just has a hole cut out in it to it here. And if we place this mask over this number, then we get rid of the number 23. And out pops the number 02. Now we can use the same idea for IP subnetting. Subnet masks and default masks, if we take a class A address for example, it uses one byte for the network work ID and three bytes for the node ID. And we can write that as network node node node. And if we go back to our paper illustration, we take a paper mask and we cut out a hole for the single byte and we just plate, place that mask over the IP address and this is our class A IP address here and it pops the number 11 that is the network ID which we already know it's a class A address and we know that the first byte is allocated for the network so it's not telling us any anything new it's just another way of writing it now we don't do that with bits of paper we do it with numbers and what we do is we logically and the mask with the IP address. So given an IP address, like we saw before, 11 dot something, we logically and it with the subnet mask. If you're not familiar with it, uh, this is the logical and table. One and one is one, and one and anything else is always a zero. So basically, to get rid of something, you and it with a zero. So what that means is here for our subnet mask is if we want to get rid of the first, sorry, the, the last three bytes in a class A address here, we just add those with a zero. So our subnet mask for a class A address, or sorry, so a default subnet mask for a class A address is 255000. Now for a class B network, we need to hide the last two bytes. So our mask is 255.255.0 and 0, which gets rid of those last two bytes. And for a class C network, we need to add the last byte. So we have a subnet mask, or should I say default subnet mask, of 255, 255, 255, and a zero. Remember, anything added with a zero is always a zero. So let's have a look at subnetting a class A network. So we've got a class A network consists of 
first byte for the network and three bytes for the node. Now it's important to understand that the network part of it, this one here, we can't do anything with. It's allocated and we can't touch it. Now it's used to route packets on the internet. Now once that packet enters the network, the private network, then the node address is used and the public network is not used. Sorry, public network address is not used. So this part of the address is not used once it's on the internal network. But the last three bytes, node, 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 are used. And now as a network administrator, I can interpret those, those last three bytes in any way I want to. So what we can do now is we can split the last three bytes. Instead of interpreting in those last three bytes as node, 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 we can interpret them, for example, as a subnet plus two node bytes or subnet subnet and a node byte. Now this idea is very important. What we're doing is we're not changing the IP address in any way, shape or form. What we're doing is reinterpreting what that IP address means. We're reinterpreting how that IP address is constructed and how many bytes are being used to represent the network segment and how many bytes are being used to represent the node segment. So let's have a look at uh, an example class A address and we've got the A address, class A address 11.1.1.21 and we're going to subnet it into network subnet subnet node and this is again is our paper mask. We, what we're doing is we're getting rid of the last byte. So we place that mask over our number and what pops out is 11.1.1. Now, this is actually network number 11, subnet number 1.1. Now, we don't differentiate between the network and the subnet, so we just call it network 11.1.1. And then the node address is 21, which is the bit that's hidden by, by the mask here. So the mask actually reveals our network address and by revealing our network address, it also reveals our, our node, node address. Now, the example we just covered was a class A address, and we can also do the same with a class B address. So a class B address is normally network, network, node, node, and we can reinterpret that address as a network, network, subnet, plus node. And that uses the mask 255, 255, 255, 0. So the 0 gets rid of that last bit here, the node part of it. Now, both the class A and class B can be subnetted on a byte boundary. In other words, we're using the 255 as the subnet mask. Now, for a class C address, we need to subnet on the last byte, this byte here, so we can't use the byte boundary. And we're going to cover the class C subnetting. We're going to cover a lot more examples in the next video, and I'm just going to do a video on subnetting examples. Now, to, to finish off here, classless inter-domain inter routing now that was introduced in 1993 and it replaced the classful, classful network design. So instead of allocating network addresses using the 8-bit groups, it uses variable length subnet masking. And it also introduced a new method of denoting network masks. And a class C network, for example, would normally have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 0, basically using 24 bits for the network and 8 bits for the node and we can write that using the slash 24 notation so our IP address 192.168.1.168 would have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 or written in CIDR notation would have would be written like that IP address slash 24 24 denoting the 24 bits are being used for the network segment, this one here. So it's just a different way of writing subnet masks, classless interdomain inter routing notation. Just to summarize, a subnetting divides a large network into smaller networks, just as a partition divides a room into smaller rooms, and we do it to stop the devices on the network interfering with each other. and to create subnets, remember, we require a router, so you can't have a subnet without a router. Now, some resources on the site, there's, there's a written tutorial, and I actually cover some worked examples in this tutorial as well. So if you go over to the site, you can take a look at them, and you'll find some links to other resources. 
And as I say, I'm going to do another video just totally dedicated to subnetting examples because the best way to actually learn subnetting is by going through a few examples, not only work examples, but also doing them for yourself. Okay, so that's the end of the video. If you've got any comments, then leave them below. Um, if you like the video, then use the like button below. If you like to get notified when I publish new videos, then you can always subscribe to the channel. So until next time, bye.